and another important point we have to note down is that we have plotted this graph for, along with the versus alpha a that means we have taken this cos k a value as plus 1 and minus 1 here and it means the value of cos alpha a here cos or let me write it here cos of alpha a this one sorry k a let us say then cos of k a this value is equal to plus minus 1 because plus 1 to minus 1 so allowed values are only between these two values which means it will be only if k a is equal to n by it will happen only then it which shows that the value of k will be equal to n pi over a so allowed values of the this function will be only when k will be equal to n pi over a this is one thing so which means that energy spectrum consists of an infinite number of allowed bands that is very important because n is integer and the allowed bands these bands are only between the values where k is equal to this so this is the important result of chronic penny which tells us that the energy spectrum will consist of infinite array of allowed bands and which will be separated by intervals having no energy levels because here there is no energy level here there is no energy level similarly here so these energy bands are separated by no energy level levels and these no energy levels are also called forbidden regions now the bandwidth the or you can say width of this width of these allowed or uh, energy bands increases with the increase of alpha a means this again very important point that as alpha will a will increase this side then this energy band this band with the size of it will increase gradually and the reason for that is that the, this value p sine alpha a over alpha a will decrease as this value is increasing and you know this value is high and this is low further it will be low so this value will keep on decreasing but this energy band will increase and another another point on the contrary we find that if alpha a is decreasing let us say and when it will decrease the value of p will increase here and when p value of p is increasing uh, the width of particular allowed this energy allowed band will decrease which means the width of allowed energy band decreases with the increase of binding energy of the electrons and uh, for example in a special case let us say when p approaches to infinity this this height approaches to infinity then the allowed band this band will be very very narrow and that will when it will be very very narrow then it will be independent of this value of k that means in that case it will not depend upon this k and uh, in such case the energy spectrum becomes simply uh, line spectrum and we know that uh, alpha square we have seen earlier that we have put alpha square is equal to 2me over h cross square so from here we can find the value of e is equal to h cross square alpha square over 2m and it shows that uh, the value of energy if we plot the value of energy with respect to this k then we find the graph comes out to be of uh, of this nature we get this kind of graph means if we plot a ek graph ek graph mean energy versus this k graph then this graph comes out to be like this i have plotted this k here and energy here along y axis and you will find that 
between the values of k that is uh, we have using here plus pi by 2 because it is n pi by a so when n is 1 it is only pi by a for this is uh, if it is minus n then we can go to this side otherwise 2 pi by a 3 pi by a and so on and uh, this is a periodic it is looking out to be very periodic and if in energy increases then graph comes out to be like this at different energy levels now here what we want to say is that this this function is periodic you know in in pi by a times so whatever we get because it is periodic so if we know the value of uh, this uh, function or you can say energy between minus pi and pi by a and pi by a then we can easily find its value in the next period and we can find in the next period so it is not necessarily that we must know the value or we have to plot all those values therefore uh, we can make this graph easy or simple just by plotting it in the first uh, uh, limit that is minus pi by a to plus pi by a so in first uh, uh, period of this k if we plot then we can very easily find the values in the next period therefore this graph may be simplified into a graph as here as I plot the graph of only first period let us uh, plot for the first period only that is now I don't need to plot all the uh, periods I will take this graph let us say this side I will plot K and this side I am plotting energy E and we have to plot only between this minus pi by a to this plus pi by a reason is that because the values are periodic because our function is periodic and therefore energy in the first zone will be given by let us say this thing here this part and then second higher energy level will be of let us say of this part up to here and next level will be equal to same as earlier like this so in this level in uh, in or you can see in first period here in first period this is called you know this is uh, called the uh, EK diagram this is very famous EK diagram and which, uh, which showing us the value of K uh, energy with respect to K and uh, due to its periodicity it is called a reduced zone uh, diagram EK diagram reduced zone means we have reduced all zones into simply one and because it is periodic so we can find the value in the next zone so this is called reduced zone uh, diagram or you can say reduced zone EK diagram and further we can again plot you just see here that after completing one energy you have some gap over here and it is not touching here if it is just above the lower one next energy level is above the it is called direct band diagram or it is called direct semiconductors if you find this kind of diagram and if we don't get the diagram like this that its lower portion is not directly above the highest part of this graph then it is called indirect semiconductors but if it is so then we get it is semiconductor because this is a gap 
this is a gap and the energy level from here to here it is called one energy band which uh, you can show like this that if we take uh, this value from here and up to here this value it will make a one energy band and if I take this value up to here and this value up to here it will give you second band so lowest band is you know known as valence band and above band is called conduction band so that means there may be several bands or conduction band but it is seen that the electrons lying or electron having energy at the lowest part of the conduction band this zone and at the highest part of the valence band only these electrons take part in the conduction of in semiconductors and this is the outcome of chronic penny model that uh, and it explains why some of the materials do not conduct at normal temperature and some of the materials conduct which are metals and here this is the example of uh, semiconductors which have different energy bands valence band conduction band etc and when you get the ele when electron gets energy to go from valence band to conduction band only then they conduct now this diagram can further be uh, simplified and that uh, diagram is called extended zone diagram and which we can uh, draw like this if we draw extended zone then let me just draw just above it now I don't need to draw all these curves like this but I will take the help of only first graph that means I will take first zone from here to here that is minus pi by 2 pi by a to pi by a then we have 2 pi by a then we have 3 pi by a and so on similarly this side now what to do is I know the value in the first zone here first zone value is is let us say or let us say we draw only the upper bands so means first value let us take in the first conduction zone value is from here to here so it means I will draw this value from let us say here to here in first zone it will be just up to here then next naturally this zone has the value in upper because here we have energy band gap here we will show this gap this gap is it is up to here only then next zone will start from here because this energy gap is there then next zone will be up to here only this way and then energy there will be energy gap and next zone may be up to here so it means if I take the zones different zones then next zone next curve in the first zone is like this but in the next zone uh, if I take this one then it next zone it will go this way so that means in the next zone this curve will go from here uh, if I draw this zone it will go up to this zone as like this and in the next zone it will go like this so it shows this diagram shows that there are we can draw the uh, energy bands in different zones but not drawing all curves completely we are just drawing like this and it lies on a kind of parabola we can just draw that parabola like this and it is lying over this and in this parabola uh, in different zones we can say that energy is not continuous here from here to here this is a discontinuity and from here to here it is a discontinuity so it shows that there are energy bands but 
discontinuity is there so it is also a band and this is also a band energy band this is also energy band so all electrons here have these are allowed energies for the electrons but this zone is not allowed zone so you can simply uh, say that the zone shown over here uh, let us say zone shown this part or well, let me take it as smaller this part is not allowed this part here this part is not allowed this is forbidden band this this is not allowed electron cannot come here and similarly here another band you will find so these these areas are not for meant for electrons these electrons can only uh, stay they can only occupy their positions only in these areas and that gives us the energy bands of solids and which are these are allowed values allowed and these are forbidden forbidden values of energy so this is this side we have plotted energy this side we have plotted value of k this is again a k e k diagram but this is called extended zone this diagram is called extended zone diagram and since it is in k and e k these zones are called Brillouin zones these different zones this zone and this zone this is called preloin zones or let me just write it as Brillouin zones and Brillouin zones are the primitive zones in reciprocal lattice and uh, reciprocal lattice is not direct lattice that we will discuss later on but we must know that Brillouin zones belong to the reciprocal lattices and from here we know that if this gap is very small or if, if this gap is missing if these uh, these uh, curves just join each other over uh, one another then that shows that it is for the metals but if these are uh, separation is small then these are for the semiconductors but if this separation is large then these are for the insulators so it shows that in chronic penny model we are able to explain the uh, restrictions or the limitations of uh, Sommerfeld model or Drude model where we cannot explain why some of the solids are conducting and others are not conducting. So this uh, condition of conductivity comes out from this diagram that is through the Brillouin zones diagram which is the outcome of uh, chronic penny model. So that's all about the chronic, chronic penny model. Thank you for watching this video.